Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's a little bit different this week. It actually feels really weird sitting here in broad daylight here because we only, uh, only tonight is our first night changing over to starting at 7 o'clock here. And, of course, with the time change here recently, too, now it's still all white on us outside. So it feels weird. It feels way early. We're used to doing this stuff at night. So I hope everybody has had an awesome week. We've got Chloe out here. I'm going to try and keep her out for a little while. She's got so much energy now. Don't you? You're just all over the place, girl. Those of you guys who don't know, it's our little rescue retake here. She's a uh, female lavender mainland. And she's been kind of staying to herself the last couple weeks. She just took a long time in shed. And uh, she finally shed the other day. She had a bunch of... Uh, it's the only bad thing. She's one of the few retakes that I've got on actual substrate. So she gets in there and she gets active and kind of nosing around in the dirt and then pushing on the glass a little bit. Sometimes she had a bunch of stuff all packed in her nostrils from that. So I gave her a really good soak. She had a good, had a good shed, got all cleaned out. So she feels better now and she's ready to go conquer the world and all of the other animals, her included, I'll need to get outside. I was just talking with a neighbor about this today, man. I've had like two days so far where I could really take the animals outside and let them run around. The springtime is just fighting tooth and nail, trying to uh, stay away from us as long as it can. But it should be kind of interesting coming up here. We've got, uh, got a new animal coming here Monday that I'll go into. What are you doing? <laughs> I was actually downstairs with Niles earlier today. Uh, he ate earlier. And uh, God, I was sitting down here. He came up, actually caught me right in the eye with his tongue. His animal is such a trip. I'm going to have to start doing some more videos with him here pretty soon, too, because he has turned into... It, it's almost like here over the last couple of weeks, he's really... Um, started to enjoy the attention i come down open up the door a lot of times he comes right out to me and stuff like that so it's really really cool to see so ah and go through and see who all's on i know a lot of folks are probably not up to speed with the new uh we got 14 folks on yeah a lot of people probably just not up to speed with the new New hours, plus it being Saturday with the sun out. Even though it's a little chilly out there, it's still a pretty nice day. Serpent's OG is on. Hello. Ruth is in. Laura. And Erica. John, how you doing, bud? Come on. I still got to work the mouse and stuff, man. Just give me a second. <laughs> Kenley is on, and yes, we're having a great weekend. I took three days off work, so I've got a five-day weekend. So we actually get to get some stuff done. It's been, as you guys probably noticed again this week, man, it's just been, the content has been slow and coming out because they've been keeping me busy at work. Uh, but I've got five days off to do some work. We're going to be putting out a video over at Jeremy's place Monday. Um it's not going to be live. Um, bring, I'll come back and edit it up, try and get it out maybe Monday night. But apparently he has a, I want to say it was like a 10, 12 foot male reticulated python that's uh, kind of spicy, kind of likes to push his weight around. So we'll see how he does. It may end up being a really good handling video if it's a really, really defensive bitey snake, um, which I really hope it is. So we could spend some time really working with him and, and going through that process with a bigger one that we don't want to let bite us, uh, which is kind of what we've been waiting for. But 
Um, any of you guys that know Jeremy, Jeremy Turgeon from Brass Man Reptiles, um, he knows what he's doing. So he is, uh, I guarantee the snake's been handled properly and all of that stuff. So he uh, probably is not going to come to me being a basket case. Yeah. But then again, if Jeremy says he's got an attitude, then I'm sure he's got an attitude. We'll see how that plays out. So Judd is with us. New Patreon member, too. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Tara's with us. Hello. Oh, yeah. Chloe's a stud. She's awesome. Get in the camera. Come on. There you go. Get in there. <laughs> I tell you, this is this is one animal I'm really anxious to see her grow and get bigger and keep getting bigger. Uh, she is going to be an absolute beautiful specimen of a snake, man, when she gets full grown. Uh, she already is, but when she gets big, I think she's going to be a pretty impressive girl. Hey, Megan. Good evening. <laughs> yeah, Tara says she hasn't tested the Zoom link yet. I hope it works too, because I haven't tested it yet either. So we're all going to test it together. Um, it should be pretty simple. The only thing about that is, in order to go over forty minutes on that Zoom call, you got to pay for it, which I'm fine with. But considering it's the first one. Uh, I just want to get on, make sure everything's going to be working. Because if it's if it's got a lot of hiccups or something like that, or if it's just not, if I think there's something that we can do that's going to be better for everybody else, then I'll start looking at different options. I just wanted to give this give this a chance first because it's the most popular. A lot of people use it, and it works for a lot of folks. So, so it'll be a 40 minute Zoom call tonight. For those of you that don't know, the reason why we started. An hour early at 7 o'clock instead of 8 is for all of the paid Patreon members. We, we're starting tonight our first uh, open Zoom call to where anybody that's on the Patreon page can jump in. It um, uh, should be a lot of fun. Get some good, uh, good exchange of ideas. Let everybody get in, have conversations about their animals and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that I'd like to see happen at some point, you know, is have some handling stuff where we get maybe a Patreon member that's got um, kind of spicy snake that they're having problems working with that we can get in and start, you know, collectively working with. And everybody learns a little bit from it, too. So, uh, you know, stuff like that. Have another resource there that's, uh, that's you know, really centered around around you guys, around the community, you know. It's one thing that's kind of unique about uh, about this channel. Since we don't do any breeding, we don't do any selling of animals and stuff like that. If we show them off, they're just out here hanging out with us to either help us, you know, illustrate a point or just so everybody can see you. <laughs> yeah, so we're not always not always out here selling stuff. Which, of course, I do. I swear, I should have. Uh, got a Amazon link up for this coffee cup. I think it was, man, what was it? Was it Tara that got that? Um, she found herself a snake cup. It wasn't like this one, um, but it was really cool. Had a little silver cobra hat on it. I have to look up and see if I can find that. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> hey, Nicole's on. We're competing with WrestleMania, so. I'm not going to be nearly that exciting. <laughs> what are you doing? Get over here, crazy girl. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, Judd talking about, and there must have been a comment up there about beardies because he's talking about about them being so food motivated. Yeah. Ours is too. If you got a little beardy down there that we took in. Um, we took him in four or five years ago, something like that. 
uh, the place where we got him from uh, pretty much essentially gave him to us because he had metabolic bone disease from whoever had uh, dropped him off there. And yeah, they wasn't gonna wasn't gonna just sell him to anybody as a pet. Uh, most people don't want to take in an animal that's that bad off. It had it had pretty pretty severe um, MBD. Uh, could barely use its heart, its hind legs. Um, didn't have the spinal deformities and stuff like that. It just had really um, uh, bad mobility. And I really didn't expect him to last. I didn't expect him to last six months when we got him. And five years later, every time I go down there, man, he's bumping the glass as best he can and stuff. Um, it's something that doesn't really get better over time, but you can stall it and, you know, stop it from progressing any further. And he's still with us five years later, still kicking one of the most gregarious little animals that we've got. So. And let's see. <laughs> Yeah, she's feeling herself. Definitely feel, feeling herself. Mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I've got to stop. See, I'm kind of torn because part of me wants to start rearranging and seeing what I can make room for down there in our reptile room. But, you know, we're still hoping to get a move in this summer. I don't want to put all that effort in just to go ahead and turn around and and move. So I didn't have to start all over from scratch. Ain't that right? Let's see. Okay, cool. So how many folks do we got on? Up to 18. Well, we've got a lot of our normal folks on here tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and put her back. Or else I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm not going to be able to do anything except pay attention to you. Since you refuse to chill. Yeah, it's really good to see her feeling better. She um, she was really struggling with that last shed. And in her enclosure, it's got all that moss in there, the water bowl for her to soak in. and was constantly hosing it down and stuff like that. But she was still struggling with that one. So, A couple soaks, and she's doing good now. So, hey, hey, Carla, how are you doing today? So we're going to go over our regular beginning stuff right here. I'm going to go over US Arc really quick for anybody that is new. Everybody else has heard this safe spiel about 200 times, but it is what it is. So let me go ahead and share this US Arc screen real quick. Okay. For those of you guys that aren't familiar with US Arc, um, if you've got any reptiles, pretty much any animal at all, this is the best organization to pay attention to, to support. They pay attention to the legislation, um, different FWCs and state houses, things like that, um, and have been really effective in stopping a lot of animal bans and bad legislation around them. Um, what I do every week is go over any new alerts, any new news, and I think I need to add U.S. Arc Florida in on here, too. Um, then I start going over their stuff as well, but we'll go to their homepage right here, which is where I suggest everybody go. You can go up here. Where's memberships here, go up there. You click memberships. It'll show you which ones you've got available to you. And you know, it doesn't make any difference what you can afford. Just do whichever one you can afford because the numbers matter just as much as the money does. Um, and the money is important. Lawyers are expensive and all that stuff. Don't get me wrong. But the numbers really make a big difference when they go down there and they start talking to representatives. And if they can have 100,000 
registered voters as opposed to 10,000 people behind them. It's going to make a lot more difference. So we'll go over. They've got the alerts tab right here. Um, uh, the federal stuff. Matter of fact, I think they had just updated this some. But anyway, um, here recently, there's five of them that have gotten completely squashed. Um, all of them would have sucked pretty bad. Uh, it was all pretty bad legislation on all of them. Uh, you know, the Arizona one, down in Colorado, South Carolina, like we say, that one's not terrible. They're just reworking some stuff, particularly for native wildlife. Um and then Washington, Florida, and Louisiana, all five of those states got the kibosh put on these bad laws that they were um, beginning to uh, put, on the, put on the table to vote on. So uh, if you don't already have your U.S. ARC membership, go on, get it. Get it knocked out. It, it, it's less expensive than buying feeders. So I know every time I go out and buy feeders, I'm spending between 100 and 200 bucks a pop. Um, and I'm an old broke guy. And I guess still afford the U.S. ARC membership. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, we're actually should be pretty interesting tonight. See everybody on this first round of... Uh, of zoom calls uh, i've been wanting to start doing more stuff for the patreon community just because you know we've got a lot of folks on there that have been uh, supporting us for a long time and you know you, when you talk about all of the different perks that are available as far as like you know time that you can make available to communicate one-on-one -on -one with people and all that um when you're smaller it's easier to pretty much catch everybody that's got questions and so forth but as you start to grow and as more people start coming on board um, and something like a patreon page is a really good way to kind of triage the people that you know you're going to pay attention to first that you know they know that they're going to get some kind of an ax some kind of access so So we're pretty happy about that. Finally hit 60. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been jumping up here like mad. It's been I've had a couple days here that's been over 80 and now it's getting back into the 30s at night. And all the animals are confused and I'm confused and I'm just I'm ready for summer to be here. Especially since my big female rig tick uh, just shed the other day and destroyed her enclosure. So every time after a shed, she's all 100% ready to come out and uh, run around. So she's got all kinds of energy now. And after that, after that first time of taking Niles outside um, this year, he is just his personality and it's so cool to watch him um for those of you guys that aren't familiar niles he's a six foot nile monitor and i've had him since he was a baby and it's so cool to watch his attitude and his personality change as he ages uh, he's went through these stages uh, when you first get them they're not too bad to work with they're really food motivated so you can tongue feed them and stuff like that as they start to get bigger and you start to put them in bigger enclosures and all of this, you'll see distinct differences in their personality as they go from enclosure to closure. Um, you know, as they kind of hit that lizard adolescence, Niles really had an attitude problem there for a little while. It was, you know, as soon as he got big enough and he realized, I think he realized that he could hurt you. Um, he took full advantage of that. Yeah, there was a couple times, man, where he's really tried to lay into me and threw his tail at me and stuff like that. Um, but now as he's starting to get a little bit older, as I suspected, um, his personality is mellowing out a lot more. Um, really comfortable in his enclosure. He's all over the place now, which makes me really happy. He had, it was funny because he had, it wasn't really funny. It was more sad than funny. But um, when I first put him in that, 
big enclosure that he's in now, he practically would never leave his tub. Um, you know, he's got a tub there, and then right next to it, he's got the basking platform he can crawl out onto. And I'd see him hit that basking platform. It was just between there and the tub the whole time because that water is such a sense of security for those guys. Um, and he has gotten so much better now about when he sees me and I open up the door coming out and want to interact and stuff. So really big strides with him. Uh, and I know we've taken the, um, for those of you guys also that was keeping up, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, those of you guys that was keeping up with the Asian water monitor that we had here, uh, he was one that I picked up and brought over from Aubrey Pruitt and was just going to use him to, to make videos with and maybe do some educational stuff on handling. But the thing is, is the animal is so socialized and comfortable that anything that you really try and film with him as far as handling goes is kind of a moot point because he's so easy to handle. <laughs> um, he never once tried to bite at me, never once tried to tail whip. As soon as I'd open up the door, his nose would be right there. Um, anytime I'd take him out, you know, he'd be a little skittish or something, getting familiar with the new surroundings. But as soon as he did, he just crawling all over you and stuff. So um, I decided to go ahead and take him back over there. And I've got some enclosure space now. I'm kind of debating what needs to go in that new one. So, I don't know. You guys can maybe throw some ideas out there of anything that, that might seem um, a medium-sized animal, too. I don't want to get another Nile-sized lizard or anything right now. Because I just don't have the... Uh, don't have the space to build another Nile size enclosure yet, but oh yeah, New York, yeah, the New York weather's got to be pretty miserable for a reptile keeper. Oh show, uh, <laughs> Kenley's reptiles are confused. They are, man. Everybody's in limbo right now because the temperatures are going crazy. I don't know whether we're in the heat or the air conditioning. Ah. Uh, you know, get them out one day, next day is too cold, so. We'll see. It'll all level out pretty soon, and we'll all be complaining about how hot it is outside. Hey, Travis, how are you doing? <laughs> yes, there's an anaconda coming at some point. <clears throat> I actually should probably start looking for one now. If I get a juvenile, then she'll have plenty of time before I need to actually build out the big enclosure for her. <laughs> yeah, tegus are actually the only restricted species out here in North Carolina. Uh, Argentine black and white tegus, we've got to have a permit for them to keep. No, you know, <clears throat> those old world rat, rat snakes too are pretty cool. But no, I was, if I'm getting anything, to put in there for right now. Um, I really want to get one of Hydrosaurus. Uh, I'd really love to find ever since I'd seen those pictures of the melanistic with the bright blue eyes at uh, black sail fin. I think that's just the most awesome animal ever period. Hands down. Um, so I should probably start looking for one. Cause it'll probably take me a little while to find one. But that's what I would really like to get. But yeah, Bob, I'll go ahead and get him out here in a second, too. Everybody always likes listening to him hiss at me. But, uh, yeah, the Bob, what she's referring to is a Sri Lankan back here. Uh, Sri Lankans, they've, they've been classified now as their own species, but they were considered a locality Indian rock python. Uh, much like the locality retics, you know, a little bit smaller, a um, little bit less common, but they'd actually designated it its own species now. So it is basically a rock python. It actually was a rock python, but now it's a Sri Lankan python. So 
you know, they like changing names, just like with the boa constrictor, imperator, boa constrictor, constrictor, all that stuff, all those names changing around. So, yeah, tegus are great. They're awesome to work with. <laughs> hey, Brandon. It wasn't giving you an option to chat. That's weird. Oh, dude, don't get me started on a sloth. I freaking love those. Them things are freaking amazing. Yeah, I, if I had a sloth, I swear that thing would go. I it, it would probably be animal abuse because it would be with me everywhere all the time because I wouldn't be able to stop looking at it. It'd be going to work with me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, one thing that I, um, oh, man, if you guys see me wince, I've got a tweaked back right now, so it's one of, and it's one of those tweaks where you can't even take a full breath without shooting searing pain. So, yeah, that's another thing that's kept me slowed down. Right, the day after I put in my leave request, all of a sudden that started. So, it is what it is. But so yeah, if you see me grimacing at some point, that's why, because I'm in whiny bitch mode. Um, but I'm old. And I can do that. Um, yeah. I def but anyway, about back to the sloth. One thing cool about the sloths, too, is they naturally have a... Um, I don't remember if it's a fungus or a moss specifically. I don't remember what it is. But they have vegetation of some sort that naturally grows on their fur. Um, and if you look at some of them in the wild, you can see a little green tinge to them. Um, something I see before that came up, I wish I would have refreshed myself on it because I don't remember what it does specifically. Uh, all I remember is that they've got moss growing on them. So you can't, you know, I mean, you, you know, you're, you're a slow roller when you have, uh, moss growing on you your whole life. <laughs> I would, man. That thing would just hang around and we would do work stuff all day and it'd be happy. Oh, what's it around? Da, 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 da. Oh, that's always fun. Yeah, knee stuff always sucks. I had an ACL replacement in the army. They could have done a better job because it's not... Uh, it's not lasting quite as much as I would like. It's really funny, though. Every time I go down to the VA, get a new P new doctor or something like that, or if I got to go in, get new pictures taken of my knee, even the radiologist will pull up the pictures and stuff and be like, man, you really did jack this thing up, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, hey, Rocco, how you doing? So, yeah, I named Rocco. Made me think of New York. New York made me think of Earthquake. How weird is that, huh? 4.8 hidden New York. Ruth is from Brooklyn. Um, and she was calling friends up there. Or they was calling her. You ain't gonna believe what just happened. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Let me see if I can gimp my way over there. Since somebody brought up Bob. I'm going to go ahead and bring him out real quick. He's right behind me, so. Uh, where are we at? He's like, anything the doctor told you to do to help you already been doing? Yeah. Yeah. All you, I mean, my experience with the bad knee, mine was a severed ACL. I spent um, seven years active duty with no ACL in my left knee before I got it. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the military mindset, you know, to give you an example, one of the, uh, when we was going through SF selection, one of the candidates out there had, I guess would sit and he was sitting alongside the road and do a uh, ruck marches out there cross country down 12, 20 miles, depending. The last one we did was like 55 miles or something like that over 72 hours, but he was sitting along the side of the road and, Cadre was just walked up to him. He's like, Cadre, what, what you doing? 
He's like, well, Sergeant, I think I broke my foot. I'm like, well, what makes you think that? He's like, well, it's crunching when I walk. And uh, Kedra is like, well, don't you think you might want to just suck it up and finish and look at it later? <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the kind of mindset that we, we operated on. Um, so, yeah, seven years with no ACL in my left knee. So by the time I got around to getting it fixed, it was destroyed. So, anyway. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Who's that? Yeah, I know Rocco was saying up in New York, he didn't feel it. Uh, I think I think it's more, I think it's closer to Jersey, um, closer to the city and stuff like that where they felt it. I'm not 100% sure. I know it wasn't uh, wasn't serious. I mean, it was, they say anything over, listening to Bill Nye talk about it the other day. Bill Nye is awesome. But um I said anything over a 4.0 is going to start you know, kind of tipping stuff off the shelves and things. And this was a 4.8. So I don't think it knocked down any buildings or nothing like that. But um, I did see some interviews with some folks that said they, you know, felt like an explosion in 15, 20 seconds of rocking. So, so yeah, the conspiracy theorists are frigging going crazy. Um, the earthquake, the eclipse. I guess lightning struck the Statue of Liberty or something like that. So now the world's coming to an end. <laughs> I ain't even going to get started on some of that. <laughs> Bob. Oh, yeah. So, so Carla's up near Syracuse and she felt it. Really? Man, I thought about that. I thought about asking him about a knee replacement, getting a cadaver, cadaver knee or something like that, or doing something else. That may still be in the cards. I don't know. I just really am not looking forward to a recovery if I decide to do something like that. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep, Southern California gets them all the time. Yeah, what's this? Uh, this. Oh man, degenerative disc disease at twenty-seven. Need a spinal fusion. Ugh. Gotta love it. And of course, what I get into after the fact is eighty-pound snakes. <laughs> okay let me go see what bob's doing i'll try and keep this thing open so you can hear him hear him yelling at me because he's in his water again hey bud wake up wakey wakey It is something I recommend. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, but this is something I recommend you do. <clears throat> when you're going in on your snakes, just kind of give them a minute and make sure that they see you. Give them a second to kind of register what's going on. Hey, bud. Hey. You doing good? You didn't take a swing at me? Come on, grumpy butt. Come on, grumpy. <clears throat> oh, boy. Ah. Oh, shit. No laughing at the crippled old man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, please. You know you like coming out here. Especially after you've been soaking in your water. You can come out here and warm up. There's one of everybody's favorite people right there. There's Bob. He's kind of our local celebrity out here. 
Come on. Get your butt up there. What are you doing? For those of you guys that might be new to Bob, here is a Sri Lankan python that we was talking about earlier. He is one that came to me with a really big attitude. And he became kind of famous for uh, going from a stone cold killer to being what he is now. Pretty chill for the most part. Pretty chill, except you just don't like it being messed with and coming out of your house, huh? What are you doing? Yeah, he's turned into a pretty trusting snake. Uh, if you guys haven't had an opportunity to see the series where we was working with him, um, it is a huge difference. And the bud. Here, why don't you try hanging out on my neck where it's warm? Ooh. Man, they're always like freaking popsicles when they come out of their water. Uh. <laughs> oh, what's that? Oh, Eric was saying oh, about how they've come a long way. I may have to look at that. So. <laughs> yeah, these, these guys are pretty cool. I'm curious to see how big he's going to get. So. <laughs> oh, man. 21. I'm trying to think of what the worst injury I'd had. Probably a concussion. By the time I was 21. Had been knocked out a couple times at that point. At a, um, um, one of my teachers, we would, uh, after I'd been at the school for like a year or something like that, at the martial arts school that I lived in, he, uh, really good guy. And, um, really amazing fighter he, he would sweep me all the time and i had this habit when i was starting out of having both of my hands on the floor and pushing myself up pretty much leading with my chin and uh he told me two or three times you know pay attention to how you're getting up that's not how you do it this is how you do it and he would intentionally sweep me every now and then and i'd push off with my hands again and uh, one time I did that, and as soon as I pushed off with both of my hands, he just kicked me, kicked my head like a football, and uh, knocked me cold, busted my face all open. And uh, that was the last time I ever got up off the ground like that, leading with my chin. So we <laughs> had, we tended to learn a lot of our lessons the hard way when I was coming up. So. Hey, Tyler, how you doing? <laughs> All right, talking about his worst worst injury oh, was either falling off a building, getting run over by an ATM, sliding down around. I, at first time I read that through, I thought those all happened at the same time. That would be a bad day. <laughs> he is. He's such a freaking good boy. He is really. And it's it's just amazing to me the transformation that he's had because he's such a joy to hang out with now. Now he's just warming up. He's happy to be out. So everybody's getting fed tomorrow. Ain't you, bud? <laughs> Hard to believe you're the same snake that was biting me in the face. It really is. What you doing? Why don't you do? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the uh, we'll see how the new retake does when you get him over. Um, 
should be kind of cool. Um, I know, like I said, I'm going to take all my recording equipment stuff over to over to Jeremy's place. Yeah, we're going to film something over there. I'd like to find something really cool because he does he does a lot of breeding and he's got a lot of different species animals over there. Really knowledgeable guy and him and Rob, uh, they've been doing like a podcast on the Brass Man Reptile Show, Reptile Talk for a long time. And then they decided to go ahead and start just a dedicated YouTube channel called the Reptile Talk Podcast. And let me see if I can find that and I'll drop the link in there real quick. Come on, bud. You stay up here. Don't be crazy. I really don't think they like the lights, which is why they keep going behind me like that. Let's go in here and find the link for that real quick. I can... Da, 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 da. Oh, my God. I am not typing well at all today. Dun, dun, dun. Matter of fact, we'll do this. And we'll do that and this. So, yeah, if you guys had, hadn't seen this yet, um, definitely recommend keeping up with these guys. And I both stay pretty busy, so it's not like they've got a regular weekly recording schedule. Um, yeah, they go, they get on there as much as they can. Uh, but definitely good stuff to keep up with. Jeremy, if you guys don't know now, is actually um, in the employee of US Arc, so he's a full time US Arc guy. And which is a which is an awesome resource for us to have, you know, an hour away from us here. You know, if I've ever got any questions, anything US Arc related. Um, then we've got immediate access, which is cool. Yeah. And there's the link for that. So on this next video that we put out with him, we're going to try and push his channel a little bit out there as well. Mm. <sighs> Empty coffee cup. Time for the backup. That I spill all over the desk. This is it, man. You guys get to watch me turn all geriatric and stuff. <laughs> Where are you going? Hey, get back here. Come on, crazy. Come on, bud. Man, it was something else. It was right on the top of my head, too. I was going to put out with that. Uh, let me go back here. I'm going to go ahead and pin that for him. Can't pin it right now because the reaction thing's right in front of it. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's see where we're at here. <laughs> yeah, he thinks he'll do it again. But uh, he's really, his demeanor has just gotten so much better. He's so chill now. Ain't that right? He used to be terrified of the microphone. If you guys, some of you guys probably didn't see it, but first couple times I had him out like this, man, he was attacking the mic, going crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to think of any current events we can hit too. Like I said, it's been a slow week as far as everything else goes. 
Um, there's been a whole lot going on the next few days. Um, really should be kind of exciting and get some more videos and stuff out. Uh, like I said, we've got um, five days ahead of us to... And actually, if you guys have got any suggestions, you can go ahead and drop them in there now on uh, some stuff you'd like to see. I've actually gotten um, another update. I mean, you guys may remember the last handling update that we did with... Uh, uh, let's see. The name escapes me right off the top of my head. Um, I was talking with another person. I don't think I'd went over this with you guys yet. Just sent me a text the other day, picture of his daughter, I think 12 years old or something like that, um, with their retic. And when he had contacted me, they was having all kinds of problems with him being real defensive and, and handling issues and stuff like that. Um, so sent up over a couple pictures of the kid, you know, messing with the snake, talking about how everything is uh, so much easier now. No, it wasn't Steve. This is another one outside of Steve. You know, Sam was Sam was saying it was Steve. Um, but no, that's a different one. Uh, he was working with the pie bulb, or with the pied, rather. This was a different guy. But it was just really cool seeing, again, you know, somebody sending a message, you know, pretty much saying thanks for your help because... Um, you know, all of the stuff that we um, that we go over with folks, it, it helps a huge deal when you're working with your animals. And they do they do grow quick. <laughs> yeah, it's I kind of like I kind of like the size that Chloe's at right now. But I remember when Monty, my female retic, was that size, too. Um. And now she's 80 pounds. So 80 pounds worth of I'm ready to go outside is what she is. <laughs> oh, that's what I wanted to mention, too. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, um, you're familiar with Mike's monitors. And um, Mike and Jen are both doing um, a podcast together. It's on the Trap Talk Network. Um because apparently MJ had kind of branched out a little bit and started to network his channel. So he's got other folks that are coming on and um, they're doing a monitor lizard series <clears throat> every, um, every Saturday, uh, Saturday at noon Eastern. So uh, they were just on earlier. If you guys get a chance to check that out, it's really good. Um, Mike Stefani, if you guys are familiar with him, uh, he is an ace with monitor lizards. Uh, he's got some really good advice. Uh, he's really renowned for his enclosures because he's got some really cool enclosures that he puts out. Uh, <clears throat> and I keep meaning to get up there, of course. Chicago is kind of a long drive from here, so. And I don't get very far from home very often. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, the baby pictures of our animals. Rocco was talking about how he used to fit in his hand. Yeah, the baby pictures. Like I've got, I've got a picture somewhere of um, my big female retic just sitting on my arm like a little tree snake. So they do grow up quick. No doubt about that. We'll go ahead and put him back now. He's done good. Are you still snoozing? Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. You guys will see too. I've got a little bit bigger enclosure set up. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but I wanted to give uh, um, give Lilith our Jag Pondro a little bit more space, a little bit more temperature variant and stuff. So we've got one set up in there. Um, 
move that up here. I need to actually redo the front doors and stuff on it. But it works for the time being. Um, let's see. I'm going to go through here real quick and see if anything jumps out at me. Yeah, like I said, guys, not a lot of new news right now. Um, we'll be coming out with the new videos early in the week um, with the new snake, which will be a lot of fun. Um, hopefully my back decides to start cooperating with me before then. And um, let's see. Yeah, I think we may end up calling it a little bit early tonight because we do have the um, Patreon uh, Zoom call coming up after this. So if you guys, let me go ahead and put this up there real quick for anybody that may be interested. Um, if you've never been on a Zoom call before, um, which I think by now, after the pandemic, I think everybody has been. Um Let's see. It could be pretty fun. And we've got a pretty good Patreon group up here, too. So put that. If you guys are interested in getting on there and joining us with the Zoom calls, that is where you do it. Um, I didn't even know until recently there's there's free members on Patreon. The Zoom calls are for the paid members only. Um, and it doesn't make any difference which tier you're on or anything like that. Um, that's something that we do for the, uh, paid Patreon members. So, um, if you're interested in getting in on that, by all means, um, I've already dropped the link for all of the, uh, Patreon folks that are in the chat right now. I've already emailed the link through Patreon. So you should get it. You should have gotten an email alert too. Um, uh, but like I said, with it being the first night, we're still going to be kind of working out some bugs and stuff like that. Uh, hey, hey, Ken, how you doing, man? Yeah, we started an hour early tonight. Right, which our new time, actually. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> Being ran manhandled by your boa. Man, Charlie does that same thing. My boa imperator, when I bring him out. And he comes in here. He just, <clears throat> and he's not smart enough to realize how tight these holes in the back of the chair. I don't know if you guys can see them or not, but there's two holes in the back of my chair. Yeah, you can see them there. And he's not not really bright enough to to know that those things are really really tight. So it takes him a while once he gets in there. So I don't know, man. I Eric was asking if I had any thoughts on getting another boa. Um, I I would like to get a true red tail. Um, I mean, I'm a sucker for bigger snakes, and I mean, I love boas anyway. Uh, Charlie, my boa imperator in there is such a sweet guy, uh, and I've seen some really, really impressive red tails before. So that may be. That may be something down the road here yeah, after we get moved <clears throat> that I will add in is a, uh, is a red tail. I think it'll be good too, just to show the differences. Um, Cause you get that question a lot, you know, what's the different characteristics between a BCI and a BCC or a BI and a BC as they're known now. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just basic stuff. Um, red tails, the BCs get a little bit bigger. Um, the patterning colors a little bit different, a little bit more bland on a BI. But I think in a lot of cases, a lot of cases, bows get a bad rap too because they've just they've naturally got a little bit different body posturing. If you're used to working with a retic or something like that, you're going to just kind of stick your neck out and you know, kind of derp sometimes. Um, my boa, you know, Charlie, even as sweet as he is, he's never once taken a swing at me. Um, and, uh, 
he he always is assed up and looks like he's ready to. <clears throat> if one of my retakes was staring at me the way Charlie does, my BI, um, I'd be concerned and I'd pay really close attention to him. Charlie, he's just really easy to work with. Uh, I think he I think he's still appreciative of me taking him in because he was in pretty bad shape when I got him. So Oh, cool. I appreciate that, man. Hopefully Colorado doesn't blow away. What are you guys expecting? Uh, tornadoes out there? That would suck. I lived in the Midwest for a while, man. There's uh, Those storms can be pretty nasty, even down in Texas. It really kind of blew my mind when I first moved to Texas because that first summer down there, we had a bunch of hailstorms, which uh, really kind of shocked me. I didn't realize Texas was like a hailstorm capital of the world. Um, you pretty much got to have a carport out there or else you're going to be dinged. Uh, hey, Banana Fields is with us. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, Rocco was saying it. Bows are easy to read. Is never once hissed or gotten defensive. I can't say that. Charlie has hissed at me before. There's been times where I've opened up the door and I've went to mess with him and he just turned around, opened his mouth and started hissing. And I, I need to get in there and have my phone ready sometime and, and capture that. Um, Cause it's, it, I'm sure for somebody you know, a little less experience. That would be really intimidating when that big snake turns around, shows you his mouth and just starts <sighs> growling at you. Um, you know, sometimes when he does that, it's, you know, because I opened up the door, I was going to go in and handle. If I was going to just handle him or something like that, I just close the door. He doesn't want to be messed with, so I'll leave him alone. But if I'm going in to clean his enclosure or something, then it doesn't matter. He can have all the attitude he wants to. And he does that, and I still just scoop him up, and he begrudgingly comes out. He's never never taken a shot at me. Um, but he does let me know. <laughs> he does let me know that um, he doesn't want to be messed with. Yeah, yeah, their posture can catch you off guard if you're not used to working with them. Man, our little miniature pincher, and of course springtime, she's shedding. And she's got these tiny little hairs and she likes to get up and rub on your face. So, um, yeah, I get these little dog hairs up here by my nose. So if you see me constantly going like this, um, I don't have any bad habits like that. It's a, uh, it's all dog hair. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it does take, ah. Come on. The new uh, the new alarm I had to set after my diabetes diagnosis. I got a reminder up there to take my meds. I'm getting old. Before you know it, I'm going to have the little pill box labeled Monday through Friday. <laughs> Let me set that stuff off there so I don't forget because I am getting absent-minded. Yeah, 40 plus. Ah, that's not too bad. So that's not quite enough to blow anything over unless it's really, really wet. We did have a um god, what was it about five years ago out here? Um tornado roll through Greensboro, which is about 20 minutes away from me. Um, right through town too, man. Just completely tore up a bunch of places. So, yeah. Erica's saying she loves that boa growl. It is pretty impressive, man. When you get a big boa that's that's yelling at you, uh, it's pretty cool. I don't have any of my other animals that will uh, are quite that vocal, so, except for my hog nose. If my hog nose was boa sized, I, I really think if hog nose got like 12, 16 feet, they would literally knock you out. Because, you know, Hognose got that. That's another thing I was planning on doing at some point was bringing her up so you can see her. 
but I've got a um a little hoggy down there. And you know, they like to flare up their neck, but they've got that really hard scale on their nose that kind of points up and uh she doesn't strike at me with her with her mouth. She strikes at me with the tip of her nose. And uh she's another one that can be kind of grumpy sometimes. But yeah, if she was a big snake, man, that thing would hurt. It would be kind of cool if I could start breeding some 16-foot hog nose, though. That would just feel crazy because they're keeled, keeled, keeled scale snakes. Anyway, so they feel a lot more rough than, than the pythons do. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> yep. Oh, let's see. Man, stayed caught up on all the comments tonight. I'm not entirely sure how I did that. Well, like I said, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that um, not a whole lot exciting going on this Saturday. And, uh, um, and of course, starting an hour early, everybody gets into the habit of coming on. Like right about now, I'm sure everybody's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's time to come on. Except now it's time to go, just about. So let's see here. I'm kind of rolling through comments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's talking about a 12 foot hog nose. That would be something else, man, because for their size, hog nose are yeah, they're pretty stout. I mean, you can imagine if you extrapolated all their proportions out, like my little female hog nose is, yeah, something like that, like that long. And, um, you know, she is a stout little girl. And then when she flattens her neck out, you know, that thing flattens out about that much. And then, of course, that pointy little nose of hers. She has gotten so much better, though. Um There was a long time there where she really, as soon as I'd open up the door, man, she'd flare up and start hissing at me and I'd reach in to pull her water bowl out or something like that. And she'd stab me with her nose. Um, but they bite a lot differently too. Um, you know, you get like a retake or something like that. If it's a defensive strike and they're trying to scare you away, you know, they're going to pop you, kind of punch you with their mouth. Um, Hoggies, when they bite you, they're rear fanged, so they like to get on and grab a hold. And, and uh, that's one thing I like about feeding her that's always so cool. Because um, she is so deliberate when she eats. I'll go in there and throw the mouse or the rabbit pup in there. And, uh, and she's just so slow and deliberate taking it down. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> you know my um one of mine that'll that'll come after me all the time actually the snake i've got here that's got the hottest food response is probably my florida king snake um she is a straight killer maybe three feet long something like that and um man she is she is easily the most reactive when it comes to food she sees anything happening by her door man she just boop, and i actually put a video up uh not long ago of her when i was going in to change her water matter of fact let's see i may see if i can find it real quick and put it up there i know it went on instagram with this new meta crap i can never can never remember what's going to instagram what's going to youtube or facebook and all that other stuff oh okay let's see if i can pull this up just for shits and grins real quick since we're talking about her This will be a lot easier than going down to pick her up. <laughs> uh, 
Mm, where's that? That's it. Mm, let's see. No, it's not going to change the size. We'll see how well you can see. Turn the volume down on it. Hopefully the captions don't cover it. Yeah, that's her. She's such a sweet girl. But this was one too where I was just kind of showing if you get, even the ones with the hottest food response that are will like immediately she'll strike you. You not even think twice about it. But even the ones with the hottest food responses, if you just give them a little bit of time to figure out what's going on, give their brain a little bit of time to register stuff. And can make everything else so easy with them. Even even the squirrely little ones like her. And I think that's where a lot of people may get in trouble. Is, you know, it's really easy to, um, you know, if you open up and you don't give them enough time to really figure out what's going on and they react defensively or something and then it gives the, the handler a whole bunch of anxiety about going in and they start getting jumpy and the snake starts getting jumpy. Whereas even the goofy ones like her, you know, if you just go in, chill, give her enough time, she's pretty certain she's not going to be able to eat my whole hand. <laughs> and she's such a good girl though. That is one of those snakes. It's just really, <laughs> she's really on point. I mean, you catch her right after a shed or something like that. She's she's pretty awesome. I like her. Yeah, get back. As you guys don't know, I got three monitors going over here, so I've got I've got the uh, stream yard and all this other stuff, and the comments up on this one. And I've got monitors on either side. So when you see me looking back and forth like that, I'm referencing something on one of the screens. Of course, it helps too because I'm a big gamer nerd. So. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, twelve foot Karen snake. That's about what it would be too if my uh, um, hoggy was that long. Hey, hey, have a good night, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah go ahead and punch that like button if you haven't we're coming up I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, oh hey cool New person, fire in a teacup. How are you doing? Said he knew the channel and you said monitors. I assumed you had monitor lizards. I do have monitor lizards. Um, Niles is my uh, my guy right now. And let's see. Matter of fact, welcome to the channel, by the way. And I'll go ahead and pull up. I know I've got some kind of pictures of them here somewhere. Uh, da -da -da -da. I need to go through here and organize all of them. Let's see. This is a good one. This one is two years ago, I think. Uh, where is it at? Window. Here we go. Oh. That's Niles. So we've got a whole series on uh, Nile monitors um, where we kind of break down all the way from the beginning, um, you know, evolution and, and you know, kind of how they came to be all the way up to handling and feeding and enclosures and stuff like that. And this was a couple years ago. He loves his outside time. And it's really kind of funny because now <clears throat> you can see 
on his, I guess you guys can probably see the mouse cursor on there. Um, but you can see where the harness on him, how far down those buckles are. Um, I've got to, I've got to get him a new one because he's outgrown it. Those buckles are all the way up top now and almost too tight. I probably wouldn't be able to take him out after a big kneel because the, the chest one would probably be too tight on him. But, uh, yeah, we definitely do stuff with monitors. Um, oh, cool. Friendly Scales is a huge fan of the videos. Really helped you improve your handling and social. Yeah. yeah. And it's, um, you know, it's kind of a shame, too, with the monitor stuff. Um, now, I was told um, that the monitor... That I, you know, of course, I had that Asian water monitor that I was going to start handling uh, doing socialization videos with, um, but it was already too socialized to really demonstrate anything. Um, I do have some friends that have got some monitors that aren't quite as friendly, um, so maybe that'll be, you know, the only problem is, is that I really need to <clears throat> really need to have more space before I start bringing too much stuff on. Um, but that is something that I do intend on doing because you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of great keepers around me and stuff like that. Um, once I get moved and I've gotten, got the ability to house more stuff and do more stuff, we'll have access to a lot more animals, um, that I can bring out and work with for socialization and stuff like that. You know, even if it's not permanent, you know, friends of mine, they'll let me bring them over, pretty much socialize them, send them back. So, so that'd be cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, Asian. Yeah, yeah. If you get, if you get, if you have space for an Asian water monitor, then <clears throat> definitely those things are, I mean, they're the golden retrievers of monitor lizards, man. They're so easy to work with, with a very basic skill level. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting a Nile. Um, they can be great if you want a potential challenge. I mean, you can you can find Nile monitors that that are chill. Some people have got them really, really trustworthy and all that stuff, just as much as an Asian water monitor. But um, they can be trickier. Um, they're naturally um, much more interested in fighting than Asians are, as a general rule. Uh, Niles has taken me a long time to get him to the point that he's in now. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, Frazier is the Asian water monitor that I had here for a little while. Um, and I did a couple videos with him, but, but yeah, we got Niles, the Nile monitor. So of course, Frazier seemed like a good, uh, a good counterpart for that. So. <laughs> oh yeah yeah retics are great man i think retics are one of the best snakes you can keep hands down um yeah if if you're if you're going into it eyes wide open uh, about everything that's involved with keeping them because there are some things involved in keeping them um yeah they can be um just the easiest snake in the world to keep they can be a freaking terror and terrible to handle um almost 99 percent of that all depends on the handler uh retics they really are a double-edged sword i got a hard time got a hard time making videos about them sometimes because mine are so easy to work with um but then again i've seen other ones and other people just have completely opposite experiences where they start working with it and, you know, maybe the animal's a little bit more defensive. Maybe they're a little, bit, a little bit less experienced or something. And if you've got a 12, 16, 18 foot snake that's pissed off at you, you've got a problem. I don't care how good of a handler you are. Um, you got your hands full. So, you know, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword when you talk about it. You've got, they, they can be real easy, like I said, but... Um, You've all you've just got to make sure you're putting forth the effort to prepare yourself for worst case scenario with them. 
Um, you know, you get a baby retic, Chloe's size. She's real easy to handle. She's the sweetest animal in the world. And I've had a lot of people contact me once their snake gets 8, 10, 12 feet long. And they're just simply not used to working with big snakes. And even though it's the same one that they've been working with, they start to get afraid of the size. And they start reading the size instead of the behavior. And you can completely ruin your relationship with an animal, you know, once you start doing that. Um, so, I mean, retakes, like I said, man, they're, they, they can be the greatest animal in the world to keep or they can completely terrify somebody. Uh, it's 100% almost on the keeper. So, hey, North Carolina Exotics is here. How are you doing? Chris, good to see you, sir. Hey, Christina, good evening. See, what's my thoughts on going from ball python to a jungle carpet? Um, carpets are awesome. Um, carpets, of course, they, they're, um, you know, arboreal, semi-arboreal. So they, they get kind of a bad rap sometimes, kind of like the boas. You know, everybody says the boa looks like they're always trying to kill you. Um, carpets can be really energetic and clingy and stuff, kind of reactive, but they're awesome. Um, they, uh, you know, mine has never taken a shot at me. I've got a jungle carpet downstairs. Um, but it's a good transition. And if you give them vertical space in the enclosures, they'll definitely use it. Um, you can do some really cool stuff for them, like the cabinets. The one I've got downstairs is in an enclosure much like the uh, china hutch I've got over here. So... Yeah, they are. They are different from a ball python that is for sure but but they are a lot of fun to keep <laughs> yep they will definitely know let you know if they like them or not yeah i need to find that video one of these days of uh rob christian he posted a video on instagram when he was out herping of going out to a water snake wild water snake that was out there basking in the sun and he just kind of crept up on it really slow and ended up scratching it under the chin never once tried to run never once tried to strike at him so uh yep yeah if you're looking for a more active animal it's not going to get retic size carpet pythons are a really good choice definitely a good choice Now, if you get, if I'm not mistaken, Chris was asking how big the carpets get. <clears throat> um, and correct me if I'm wrong here. I, you, the two main ones that you'll see are jungle and coastals. Um, I think the coastal carpets get much bigger. I've seen them pretty sizable, like 10, 12 feet. I think that's about what you can expect them. Jungles being a little bit smaller. But they can still get pretty good sized. Um. Like I said, I've got the one right now, and he is six feet, maybe. Maybe six feet, something like that. So. Um, how big of an enclosure for him? I mean, if you're looking, and like I said, it depends on whether you're going to uh, a jungle or a coastal, if they get, um, you know, something about the size of this back here, this little china hutch that i've got this is the one that chloe my little retic is in right now but i mean you can house a snake in something like that up to maybe you know five feet or so um then you're gonna really want to kind of make it a little bit bigger probably double the size that it is you just want to make sure that they've got enough floor space in there where they can you know curl up comfortably and temperature regulate and all that but I mean, something about that size is fine when they're smaller. So, yeah, yeah, that's about that's about right. Christina was saying about the size of the locality. Hmm. So yeah, guys, hey, it's um, it's eight twenty one now. So I have got the Zoom call for our Patreon members scheduled for eight thirty tonight. Um, for those of you guys that have just jumped in, uh, we started, we typically was starting at eight o'clock. 
Um, we've bumped back. We're starting all of these at seven o'clock now because I wanted to start doing a weekly Zoom call for our Patreon supporters. And so at 830, we're going to transfer over to that. And since this is the first one, I need to get all my ducks in a row. Um, I've put up the link to the Patreon channel. If you know, I'll go ahead and put it on again because I know some new folks have jumped in. Um, yeah, I've, I've wanted to start doing something special for the folks that have really been supporting the channel. So all of the paid Patreon members, uh, we're going to start here in these Zoom calls. And then, come on, let's go. And then, of course, you know, over time, have discussions of some other stuff that we can do. So, for, And for all the folks that are going to be on there, got a couple minutes to get things squared away and make sure that everything is working properly. <laughs> so hopefully everything goes well. And... Uh, we'll talk about, so I know these things, man, it's so easy for these live streams on Saturdays to just go on for two, three hours, because once we get to talking about stuff and more people get in, um, it's real easy to go on and on. So it feels like we're cutting it short at an hour and a half. Um, but we're going to moving on to that. So go ahead and keep an eye out, guys. Like I said, get subscribed to the channel here. Um, here early in the week, we're going to have some new videos coming out with the new retick. Um, hopefully, if all goes well, I'll be able to get that one published Monday night um, from over Jeremy's place, picking up that snake. If not, it'll come out Tuesday morning. But uh, yeah, keep an eye out early next week. And we will see everybody who is going to be on the Zoom call here in a couple minutes. So we'll see you guys later. Have an outstanding weekend.